sharing live stream. All right, we are live, Fatima. Oh, we're All live. Right. Uh, we are live. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, if you're watching the live, thank you guys for being here. If you're watching the recording, thank you guys for being here as well. Uh, Fatima, we have a live guest. We're going to be talking about how Fatima doubled her business in under 90 days with working with Conversionly. Uh, she owns a coaching and consulting company uh, in the beauty industry. We'll talk about that here in a little bit more detail. Um, she's going to walk us through how she went from barely making 10K a month to now having a stacked calendar every single day. Um, and we're also going to talk about how she's booking appointments with Red Hot Prospects. We're going to talk about how she's doing some of that through, you know, DMs. A lot of people uh, kind of don't really like to talk well about the, you know, just marketing inside of DMs. But I think she's doing a really, really good job. And she's doing mostly all of this, packing her calendar without a fancy funnel. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. What's going on, Fatima? How are you? I'm well. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. So let's just go ahead really quickly, kind of walk us through who you are, what you do, and let's kind of go into your business. Yes. So I am a business strategist and coach, and I specifically work with beauty brands who are looking to grow their stagnant beauty brands just make it even more specific um, for those who are struggling to get growth in their business. So that is exactly what I do. And um, I enjoy doing it. And that is exactly why I came to you guys to help me so long ago, because I <laughs> wanted to impact more people in doing that as well. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your clients, like uh, beauty brands, like I know that mm -hmm. consists of like, that's a big umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what does that look like for you? So e-commerce products based beauty brands, more okay. specifically. So for those who want to um, grow those kind of brands, so it could be anything from cosmetics and makeup to hair care, body care. I have even had some candle companies for like aromatherapy, it, just anything that enhances um, us as humans that we love that we can kind of lump into that category for beauty. Um, that's pretty much who I help to keep it more specific in that aspect. Um, so these are usually those those women, mostly women who are um, trying to grow those businesses. They don't really have a lot of knowledge base on how to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, I got a really, uh, I got an interesting question I want to ask you. Um, okay. But if you guys are watching, if you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, you have any questions for Fatima as we're going through this interview, go ahead and just put those uh, questions down below. If it's live here in a little bit, we're just going to go through the comments and see what questions you have. Her or I can answer any of those. Mm -hmm. If it's a replay, Fatima is inside of the group. I'm inside yeah. of the group. We're more than happy to answer any of those questions that you have. So. Um, specifically Fatima, like what, how do you help your clients get the transformation that they're looking for? Like what makes you different from your competitors? Wow. Um, so quite a lot makes me different from my competitors. Um, one thing is there are not a lot of coaches out there that is specific to beauty brands, mm -hmm. especially for those who are in a certain space where they're struggling. There's a lot of people that will help them launch, but not a lot of people I don't think there's anyone actually that will help that's focused on helping them relaunch um, and rebuild. And that's where I come in at. And the biggest thing that I love and what I believe in and I like helping is those people. I like to see that transformation from I was struggling here and I've been in this space for two years, three years, and mm -hmm. you've helped me rebuild all of that from the beginning and take it and really rebrand it because I have a branding strategist on staff as well that even revamps their entire brand as well from the collateral side of their branding. Um, but we help them come up with building a true foundation and actually not just focus on marketing or promo, which is what most people do. They only focus on the marketing piece um, or the promotional piece where they miss a whole section of other right. things that you got to do and establish to have a solid brain and a solid foundation. So there's really nobody out there that has, especially a, a high ticket program of this type that really works with them closely to actually transform them where they not only can physically see it, um, but they can in their numbers, but they can actually physically see their brand change from the moment they walk in to the moment they're out. So a lot of my clients, even within 30 days, they're already seeing major drastic changes just from me going and helping them rebuild their foundation at the beginning and strategizing with them on that aspect of it. And so it's not cookie so cutter. 
Yeah. Yeah. So rebuild. So you're working with clients. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you're working with clients that have already launched been struggling mm-hmm. for a couple of years, helping yes. them just yes. start from the bottom, right? Yes. And just build that foundation. Where do you feel like a lot of people or not people, I guess, where do you feel like a lot of your clients are, are like maybe dropping the ball and what they missed on the first go round? Yeah, it's quite a bit. Um, one, they're piece they're piecemealing different strategies that don't really go together. And again, there's not a lot out there for beauty brands. So they are just trying to apply different things, maybe even from different industries and YouTube and Google and trying to Google their way into building a six-figure business. And we all know that doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. So that's another mistake. Another focus is they are so focused on the vanity metrics and so focused on just posting on social media, they really don't have a clear strategy in the first place. They just kind of jump out there, they get a logo, they get a website, they put their business out there, they have not really thought about what it actually takes to build, they don't think about market research, they don't think about finding a niche, they don't think any of that stuff matters. And so they launch to crickets and they don't even know how to properly launch as well. So they launch and nobody buys and they're wondering why. Um, And for some of them, they hustle and bustle for years. I've had some clients that's come to me that's been in business for five years and hasn't profited um, because that's all that they know how to do. So it's just a lot of outdated old marketing techniques that they have not learned foundationally how to have a successful business and how to have a process that allows you to even scale and grow as well. Yeah. So, and I, I know we've had this conversation, Fatima, mm-hmm. and I think it's probably beneficial to, sh- to share this with everyone else. But, mm-hmm. um, and this is the same with our clients that we see sometimes, and I'm sure it's the same with your clients that you see. A lot of people, you know, like you said, they're they're googling their way through their business, mm-hmm. and what they try to do is they try like when they're going to. Pr- like promote like a product market fit, mm-hmm. right? They're trying to, well, they're just starting their business. They're trying to say, okay, can I make money with doing this? Or mm-hmm. like maybe they've been in the business for about a year. And so what most people do is they look at the market, they look at their competitors doing their competitor research and they, they say, okay, well, they're charging 3K for this. Yes. Let me offer just a little bit more for a little bit less. Now I'll tell you, I'm here to tell you that's a trap because usually what happens yeah. is that puts you in that commodity based mm-hmm. business where everyone else looks the same. And so what's going to eventually happen is they're going to be like, okay, well, you get on the sales call with them. They're like, okay, well, I got two other people that I'm looking at. This other person's a little bit cheaper. You guys are out offering the same exact thing. I'm going to go with a cheaper person. Exactly. And that's so frustrating as a business because it's, mm-hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, I can't like get ahead. Yes. Right. I'm, get, I'm maybe even getting appointments, but I can't close them. Right. And what we recommend is that you, you, you shift from the you know commodity based business to the value based business mm-hmm. you start creating and doing that competitive research start creating an offer that is so much more valuable than everyone else that you don't even be you're not even compared to those other two exactly. or three companies and then they get on the phone with you and they're like wow i this is the best offer that i've heard like yeah. here's my card where do i sign up mm-hmm. uh, obviously in a in a perfect world that would <laughs> yeah. not be the case but not always, right? But it's a totally different conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I bet that's probably the same thing with you, Fatima, when you're working with these businesses, been struggling for a couple of years, and you're like, hey, let's just go back for the fundamentals and the foundations. A lot of people don't think that's necessary. Yes. And you that that what I just explained, it shows you that that, fu- that foundation is necessary. You got to go mm-hmm. back to like what the offer is. Yeah. I say always that the offer is roughly about 80, 70% of your success in business. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Very, very similar to my clients as well. Um, It may not be an offer in terms of like what we have and what we do, but your product suite and what you have to offer is very much that. It is the start of the show um, in terms of what it is that you're doing. And if you don't know how to make sure that you don't blend in with everybody else, you have to establish that foundation. And that is where a lot of them come in at is they do end up looking like I always tell them they end up drowning in a sea of other beauty brands because there's nothing to show that you're comparable. So people are just going to go to what's cheaper and price. And that's one of the things I help them with midway through we're raising their prices. There's no, it's a non-negotiable when they join, you're raising your prices. 
1000%. I mean, you look at what Amazon did back in the day when they were getting into the, the e-commerce or the online selling mm-hmm. space. They didn't, I mean, yeah, they could provide a little bit less of a price, but really they're, the reason why Amazon got so big is because they were extremely more valuable than the next person. Not because they were cheapest, but because they right. were extremely more valuable. Why were they extremely more valuable? Because they had two-day yeah. shipping, free two-day shipping. Right. And, and you're looking at one one product versus another product, and you're like, okay, where's, the, like, usually what happens is like, okay, this is the cheapest one, but not with Amazon and not at that scenario, because at that scenario, it became what's the most valuable. Valuable. I don't want that. And I don't want to pay twenty dollars to get it in two days. And this is right. free two days. Exactly. They changed the game. Really, they really, they, did. they <laughs> really did. And then I think that's what a lot of people are doing now in businesses that we're helping is changing the game, right? Mm-hmm. But really, you're just looking at what the the market wants and being mm-hmm. competitive with the market and finding the gap. And just switching the gap. that offer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Fatima, walk me through. Um, you've been, oh, it's been almost about a year since you started. Walk me through like where you were before uh, Conversionly. Yeah. So before Conversionly, I was, I had finally made it to either close to 10K a month or right at that 10K a month, but I just couldn't break past that barrier. And one of the things um, that I had an issue with was really just keeping my calendar full. Like mm-hmm. I had the system running in the background, um, but like like um, you guys explained to me on when I joined the program, it was very a, much a passive approach. They would watch the training or whatever the lead magnet was. There would be an email series that would come out to them. And then I would hope that they booked a call and hope that with enough email marketing, they would book a call. Um, and my calendar just did not stay full enough. So when I did finally get sales again, I was, my prices was even lower. Now I've, I've really enhanced my program a whole lot more too. So that helps. Um, but I just could not get enough qualified leads on my calendar. It was a little bit like in between, like for like fewer and far in between from what I would have liked it to be, to really be able to make the impact that I wanted to make. Um, and so I wanted to just help more people. And I just, I, I just was frustrated. I was over it. I'm like, I've paid a lot in ads. I have a lot of leads coming through and they're just not booking the calls at the rate that I would like. Um, and so that's pretty much where I was at. And I think I got a DM from you guys in LinkedIn and normally I don't even pay attention, but I guess it was fate. So I just, I think the message was something about we can keep your calendar booked with leads or something like that. So that intrigued me. Um, yeah. So when I did join, I also was at a place where I was very frustrated. I didn't want to change my process again because I had just invested thousands in other programs and things like that before. Um, and I think at the time, I might have even told you guys, I had invested like $40,000 in just different programs, yeah. trying to find a solution. And so I might get pieces here from a program and pieces there from a program. Um, but I just, again, I might have had that system going, but I just wasn't getting enough people on my calendar for me. Right. So yeah, I was at a place where I was frustrated. I wanted to get past 10K a month. I wanted to have more consistency in that um, and actually be able to serve more clients that I actually loved to help as well. So that's where I was at when I came to you guys. Okay. Okay. And then uh, that's interesting. So you said you try, you spent, and we, I hear this a lot is I spent so much money. I've spent so much money on other programs and it yes. just hasn't, nothing has worked. What, right. what, ha, what did you try? Wow. Okay. So I did get a, a I had a few coaches before to help me. Um, And they kind of gave me the foundation so that it wasn't necessarily bad investments. It's just, they helped me do the typical things like set up my funnel, my webinar funnel and all of these different things and kind of understand the basics and the foundation of having a successful, you know, coaching business. Um, But there was still something, there was still something missing. So I might try this program, implement it. And you know, I don't buy a program and not implement it. Okay. So It's not like I just wasn't working anything that I was taught because I am very much a driven, especially if I pay money, I'm going to 
implement it exactly how you say I'm going to be on every call like that's just how it is. Um, but I, it, it just wasn't enough to help. So I tried a few coaches. One of my coaches was like 10K. And then I had another coach that was like 5K. So before you know it, you invest in three or four programs of 5K, 10K, and you're implementing these things, you're at 40K before you know it. So sometimes it might have been like smaller courses, like you know, maybe an email series kind of thing here and there to kind of help. So it's just a lot of I was one of those people that I would see a course if it was, a, I would buy on impulse a lot of the times, or I could join a pro because I was trying to solve the problem. I was trying to solve the problem with maybe sometimes the wrong kind of solutions that was presented to me, or maybe right solutions, not the right time. Um, so it was easy to kind of add up to $40,000 really quickly. So needless to say, when I got on the phone with you guys, I was not really happy about being said, you know, being told I need to invest in something else yet again. And I'm like, right. yeah, like, like it's got to be easier than this. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how I felt. And then I was like, I got to change systems. Like I just paid all this money to learn click funnels and have all of this stuff set right. up. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely was not necessarily, um, I knew that I probably needed it, but I wasn't also happy about even being in that situation after spending as much money and still not yeah. really quite getting the solution that I needed. Yeah. So. And I've been in your same shoes. Uh, like uh, for those of you that don't know, before we started Conversionly, Zach and myself, Zach is a co-founder and I'm also one of the co-founders of Conversionly. We had a marketing agency in the, in the past and uh, we tried the whole DIY stuff. And then we tried to buy in the courses and spent you know, hundreds of thousands, uh, probably, you know, uh, multiple six figures on courses and try to figure it and stuff out. And then mm -hmm. eventually it was just like, okay, just figure it out on our own. <laughs> and then through like years and a bunch of money wasted to kind of yes. like where we're at today. What I, what I usually notice is that it's usually one or three things. One is when you buy, um, a, a, you know, a product or a system or a course or something like essentially it's information of people that's already been where you're at that's helping you like pave mm -hmm. that path exactly. and get to where you want your business to be right mm -hmm. and so usually it's one or three things reasons why it doesn't work out one is like those are outdated methods that mm -hmm. you're learning mm -hmm. uh, number two is the methods are really good but you don't really get access to you know the guru or the person that it's actually the the ninja behind the scenes or the experts right mm -hmm. or number three um, you have access, uh, everything, the methods are good. You have access to the people that you need access to, but you don't really put the effort in and actually produce like on your end. Right. Because a lot of, a lot of times, like even with like the done for you programs, a lot of the stuff is done for you, but there's still work that you have to you do. Gotta do. Yeah. You, yeah. You still have to do the work. It's still your business, right. Unless you want to give up 80% mm -hmm. of your business or half of your business and you right. know, have someone just take it over. Um, so my question becomes what was different from like all those things that you tried in the past and then conversionally? Yeah. So conversionally was different because not only were you guys so hands-on with helping me, um, that element of just having you guys even help me learn the system alone because I was I had to switch everything but mm -hmm. in the end I learned the system I learned go high level but I also it automated my processes so much more it took a load off of me from being like oh my god I need to remember to follow up with this person um in two weeks because it was so automated so it, it actually brought me some time back once I got through the learning curve of like learning a new system. Um, but it even automated my onboarding process, just being able to make that an easier transition if I'm closing someone where I can, you know, onboard them a lot more effectively to having everything in one, but also just the teachings from you guys um, was probably the most impactful. Being able to get on those calls and I'm stuck here, I have questions and having that support um, because it was such a, a big learning curve I had to go through from using like five or six different systems to one system, but then also taking it a step further and learning so much more about the prospecting side, 
learning so much more about the DMs because I was never the type to be like, I'm just about to DM people. I used to be like, no, not doing it. It's just not me. Not going to do it. Um, but then I had to get past that limiting belief and that barrier as well, because that actually kept me from a lot of opportunities that I had to grow my business because I was stuck in this. I won't DM people. I won't prospect people. I won't do that. But then having someone like my setter, and we've even changed her title a little bit because it's a little bit more sophisticated now um, with what she does because she's so great at it and she loves it. But even having her, she has been a godsend because it is not as passive. There are times that people wouldn't even think to book or never book if she was not the one to be so proactive and get on the the call with them Mm -hmm. and say, hey, this is this. Because sometimes when she would call them, she would realize a lot of people would be like, what did I sign up for? And that's how I realized what was happening. There's so many people out there that's just signing up for trainings or signing up for this and that and don't even know what they've done, but having that more proactive approach to actually call them. And that is that has made the big difference in me getting more calendars booked is having that process, having that flow, having that follow-up, that automation of that follow-up as well. Because sometimes it's very difficult when you got a lot of leads to remember, let me try to keep up with following up with these people. So even right. having that whole process and flow, but then having somebody who can do a lot of that for me, that prospecting side too, that I just shred it. Um, but I had to do it for myself because I did not want it to, I, I have to be a leader. So I have to show that I'm willing to do what I'm asking my setter to do. Right. So I also followed the same process. Um, before completely handing all of that off to her but it was a lot of work I will not lie but it has definitely been worth it Um, and I can assure you as I continue to grow and grow and grow I am even when it comes to scaling is is make it's making it a breeze because I was just telling you the other day how I'm in a place where I might need to add a few more barriers on my calendar and kind of scale up a little bit, but I, I'm not necessarily quite ready to hire a sales rep just yet. So I'm in that kind of in-between space, but I'm definitely equipped to handle the growth that I've been getting because of this program. I realized very quickly that I wouldn't have been ready for what I was asking for. Um, you know, you ask for more clients, you ask for more people to, to buy. And then I realized very quickly after enrolling in this program and working through everything that I wouldn't have been ready because I didn't have the right processes. I didn't have the right systems. It was too much that was still manual for me. Um, And I wouldn't have been ready for that. So it really made a huge difference in that. And now my calendar stays booked, so. Yeah, there you go, there you go, perfect. Um, And so I know we talked about DMs um, Mm -hmm. a lot here. Mm -hmm. Um, And really quick, I I just wanna do a quick reset and then I have a question about the DM. So for everyone who's just joining, if you're just joining the live, uh, we're talking with Timo, walking through how she doubled her business in under 90 days and how she has a stacked calendar for like 30 days in advance. Um, So inside of Conversionly, obviously, uh, you know, what we help our clients do is the lead lead generation is one part. So, and then Mm -hmm. another part is like turning those leads into appointments and then, you know, closing the Mm -hmm. deals. Now lead generation consists of a lot of things. Um, Mm -hmm. and a lot of things that we talk about is like outbound prospecting through, you know, Mm -hmm. outreach, like DMS, um, you know, advertising, we talk Mm -hmm. about, you know, um, uh, organic, like Facebook group fund and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I think you really dialed in on the DM side and really mm-hmm. started getting in and like almost to like a science, mm-hmm. right? Um, I could probably dub you the DM queen. So <laughs> uh, give us some like best practices that you're finding right now when you're just reaching out to prospects that you feel like are a good fit for you and then just sending them a message or maybe like on, you know, LinkedIn or like an email or Facebook or Instagram, Mm -hmm. like what are those best practices look like? So one of the things that I have learned that goes a long way is being legitimately, it's a mindset thing, but being genuine. Um, And I think that a lot of times when people are used to coaches hopping in their DMs, they are automatically like, you know, what are they trying to sell me? But I think me just being very genuine in my approach of legitimately wanting to know, can I help this person? Can I benefit them in some kind of way? And that helps me tailor my approach. 
Um, also being very quick and to the point sometimes works a lot better um, because a, a lot of times their their bullshit meter is going off. Like, yeah, oh like, my hey, God, here, here we are. Oh, yeah, on, like yeah. whatever. But just being like, hey, I'm just being honest. I have this to offer and I think that I think that I could really help you or I've noticed that you were saying this in this Facebook group or whatever the case may be. Um, also, I do try to take more of a permission-based approach sometimes too. Yes. I, if yeah. they open the door, I'm, I'm jumping in the DMs. So even if it's as simple as they were watching a live that I was doing and they commented on the live, I'm hopping in the DM. Hey, thank you so much for watching my live today. Was there anything that stood out to you? And bridging that gap for that conversation um that has made a huge difference and really I had to take that mindset out of feeling salesy or sleazy like oh this is and just actually really switch my mindset to can I help this person I just want to see if I can help them if they say no no but I I want to legitimately see so most of the time people leave the door open for us to have that conversation in the dm and we don't realize it because maybe they didn't dm us first or whatever the case may be but if you see that there's someone struggling in a certain area and you can legitimately help them it's really that's what it's all about and i think that mindset shift really you know i no longer use a script per se because i'm really just being yeah. genuine um, the scripts did help when I first started on that. And I kind of used that and learned and adapted over time. But you going, right? Yes. But it's really, you know, it's really about how can I help these people? How can I impact them? So mm -hmm. it, I don't have that feeling anymore of feeling like, oh, if I go in the DM, this is like, no, it's really about, I want to help you. So if I have something that you need. I have a solution that you need that I feel like could help you. And let's talk about how I can do that. I've closed people in the DM quite a few times. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've done voice notes in the DM. Like sometimes it's easier to do that instead of, and that actually converted really well for me. So sometimes it's really easier to do that than to maybe try to type everything out. Um, and them hearing your voice and connecting in that way has helped a lot. So I yeah. actually do like it now. I used to say I would never <laughs> do that first. I think- if I could shed some light, I think um, like as you grow and scale your business, majority of your appointments are going to come from advertising, right? Mm -hmm. Especially as you start to grow a team. Like, right. And then like for us, like we're at a 30 person team right now. And I was, I'm still using my, like, for example, I booked maybe four appointments this morning just from LinkedIn and I just mm -hmm. pop on there every, you know, like mm -hmm. once or twice every day for like 10 minutes. I talk yes. to people. What we're finding right now that is working better than anything else is in the past year or in the past handful of years, people have been kind of teaching like the outreach strategies and it's more of a cookie cutter approach. And what mm -hmm. we're finding right now, you have to be personal. Like it, there has to be personalization in that yes. outreach and be genuine. Mm -hmm. That voice note strategy, we've been testing that too for probably the past handful of months. And it is converting better than anything that we are yes. seeing right now. Yes. You could just hop on, um, you know, Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, and just send over a voice note just to initiate that conversation. And then have like a couple of questions that qualify them. Yes. It makes it easy to book the appointment. Right? Exactly. It's exactly. you're, you're not going to get rich off of outbound prospecting, but it's a really good way to it bring helps. in two, three, four, five appointments a day. It, right? it, it definitely is. helps. Yeah. So it really um, does. any other, uh, tricks, tips, secrets for the, for the DM? A lot of people don't like to like, ah, oh, I don't want to like cold out. out I like, think out that, people, I but. think that again, my biggest thing is if you know, in ways that they're opening the door, I think it helps make you feel comfortable. If they're liking a certain post, sharing a certain post, commenting under different things, if they've expressed that they have, you know, in a Facebook group that, hey, I've been struggling with X, Y, Z, and you're different from everybody else with how you comment and you ask them, do you mind if I shoot you a DM about this? Um, I, I think I could really help you. It's really no, I can't think of any other secret other than just really being yeah. genuine and actually um, the permission-based approach really helps me a lot because again, people are liking different things every day. They're sharing different things. They're watching your lives. They're watching your stories. Even if they just start there, that makes them feel comfortable to open up the conversation instead of just coldly just DMing somebody that they've never had any interaction with. That was where I kind of started it, getting more comfortable before I just kind of just reached out to people like, 
just straight cold kind of outreach about it. Um, that made me more comfortable because again, at least I know, okay, there's some kind of interest there. Let me ask a few questions to see if they even qualify. I get a little bit of idea. Um, and a lot of times them hearing the voice note, being able to connect with you and hear the sincereness in your voice. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, that's probably been my biggest secret. I'll say is sometimes it's the voice, the voice note has been very impactful when I started doing that because people can really hear and sense it. So even if they just start off with people who have left that door open in some kind of way, they're liking your posts, yeah. shoot them a DM. If they're commenting, shoot them a DM. If they're struggling with something, give in a group and they're talking about it and you know that you can help them just commenting and saying like, oh, I'm so sorry about this, this, this. I understand how frustrating this can be. I was there before as well. Do you mind if I shoot you a DM? I would love to talk more about how I can um, possibly help you in some kind of way or something right. like that. And then usually they almost always say sure or yes. And so if you just got to start there with the kind of permission-based kind of warmed yeah. up, like they have left the door open in some kind of way, it helps. That's what helped me kind of open the door to get more comfortable with doing it. It's like, okay, this person watched my live today. Let me just DM them and thank yeah. them. This person shared a post that I had. Let me DM and thank them and ask them a little bit more like, what, what was it in particular about this particular post that stood out to you? And just kind of bridging that gap, that helped me get more comfortable with the DMs is just kind of taking a more permission, yeah, warm kind of base point. approach. Yeah. That's good and point. then I and, just kind of got this cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And any of those out, you got those guys that are out here or girls that are watching this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys, if you don't have an audience and you're not like, you know, like how, if you don't have a Facebook group, you're not doing lives, you can use other people's Facebook groups. That's like, what I do. Find out who your target market audience is. Mm -hmm. Maybe share some valuable posts or something like that. If they like it, if they yes. comment it, then you can reach out to them. That's what I do. Be <laughs> your, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be your Facebook live or it doesn't have to be your Facebook group, right? You can, yes. you can leverage other people's group in a, in a, in a nice way, right? You know, yes. make sure you respect all the, all the, the things rules. that the, yeah. the, group, the group members put together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you one more question, but before we, before I do, I just want to say, if anyone's watching uh, the live, uh, just go ahead and just drop any questions that you guys have. And we'll be sure to answer those here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, number two is if you guys have any questions, you're watching the replay, put those in here. Uh, we're both inside of the Facebook group. We're more than happy to answer those um, for you. You know, if, you know, if this, uh, if this, like, it's, let's just say uh, a couple months from now, there's a, um, a question that gets popped in there. We'll, we'll see that. So um, <laughs> last question for Tima, before we wrap up, what is the number okay. one piece of advice that you would give anyone that's just starting their business or it's just struggling to, to get appointments on their calendar or to scale? Uh, your mindset is very powerful and it makes a big, big difference. And so one of the one of the things that I notice a lot of people that uh, even reach out to me, even about my experience with conversionally, I always have to tell them, you got to have some accountability. If, if it's a great program and it's been proven to work for others, it works if you work it. What you put into it is what you will get out. And you have to be willing to do it, even though it's difficult, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's a big change, even though it is probably something you're not used to or you don't even want to do, but being disciplined and actually just being dedicated and showing up for what it is that you do every single day, even when it gets hard, makes yeah. a difference. It really does because I don't always feel like DMing people, but I have to remember, you know, why I'm doing this again and keep that in perspective. And I have to be disciplined because, you know, we're not always going to be motivated, but if you're disciplined, that trumps motivation any day. So um, for anything, whether it's joining your program or building their business, and it's definitely not always an easy journey. And a program is not always going to be this magic one pill kind of fix, right? And I think sometimes people join programs or courses and things like that, and they feel like the program is going to be the end all be all complete fix to what it is that they're trying to do, but you got to still work at it every single day. You can have the information, you can have the tools, you can have all of these things that are given to you. But at the end of the day, if you do not step up to the plate and take accountability 
and do something with it and be open to feedback, adjusting, tweaking, pivoting. If this didn't work, try it again, test this, try that out. If you don't have that mentality, you're going to struggle. So you have to be willing to do that because, I mean, that's really all that it is, is running a successful business is tweaking and pivoting. And that's really all marketing is. So even with these great, amazing strategies, you still have to make it fit for you and what you have and how it works for you. Um, but you guys are given the tools and the foundation. So is any other program. So it's really about you. You have to be self-aware and accountable for your actions and what it is that you do to see the success you're looking for. Great advice. I couldn't, I couldn't hit the nail on the head any, any better than you just did. So <laughs> uh, I don't see any uh, uh, questions just yet. So if you guys have any of those, put those in the, in the comments and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer those. But Tima, thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. It's Hello. always a pleasure speaking to you. Um, no all right, guys, that, that kind of wraps up the, uh, the, the meeting with Fatima. Thank you guys so much for watching Bye. and we'll see you guys in the group. Adios. Appreciate you. Bye.